if you go to any event <clears throat> where, like, let's say, J.J. Uh, Abrams is, is talking at the event, now everyone's going to try and zone in on J.J., but his people are going to be in that first row, okay, any, any of these big wigs, okay? And if you Google who their partners are and Google image what those people look like, you know what those people look like. So instead of trying to talk to JJ, you try to talk to his right-hand guy, or James Am James Cameron, you talk to his right-hand guy, because they're, for one thing, they'll, be, they'll um, admire the fact that you've done your homework so you know who they are. And, and all, but again, it's always treat people with respect, always treat people like you'd want to be treated. It's not about the fast hustle, it's not about, oh my God, I'm gonna pitch this and they're gonna love it and they're gonna buy it, no. You're building a career, and a career is made out of relationships, and a career is about doing the work. And what gains respect is if you, let's say you meet someone like Brian Burke, who's JJ's partner, and you say, you know, and you do your research, so you know a little bit about them, and you say, you know, I'm, I read that your first, you know, the first shot you ever produced was about, you know, uh, a boy who had a wooden leg, whatever, it doesn't matter. And you say to Brian Burke, you know, it's funny, I, you know, I, I looked up that short online, and it was just so moving, and a friend of mine, is, you know, when I was a kid, is, you know, a terrible train accident, he lost his legs, and he's become a, a, a you know, a decathlon athlete and I'm doing this this little piece about him and you know it's just and you really inspired me so Brian Burke will say wow that's really great the next time you see Brian Burke you say, you say you know I was so you were so encouraging last time we spoke and I've, I've actually finished the short and I'd love to send it to you well the fact that you said you were going to do something and then you did it and I'm not talking about Brian Burke please don't everyone reach out to Brian Burke but um but the fact you did 99.9% .9 of people in this town or in this industry they say they're going to do something and they never do it. Which is why, if you have a screenplay and the money isn't attached or the actors aren't attached, that's why they blow you off. Because most stuff never gets anywhere. And so why should they put more effort in your project than you're going to put in your project? But if you actually do it, let's say you make that documentary and it's great, then they start they will becoming interested in you and then they want to help you because they see that you're serious. And everything in my career has been about saying I'm going to do something and then doing it. I'm very... Um, strong on that. I'm very firm on that in my own career. I'm very hard on myself and um, very committed. But, pe but that then establishes that you have integrity. And once people get that, uh, integrity and authenticity are very important. And once people see you've got that, they trust you to a certain degree and then they'll help you. So it's wor it works that way. You mentioned in previous videos that you know breaking into film and television is really not that difficult. No. As long as you know what you're doing and you apply yourself with dedication and consistency. Yes. So going back to that same thing and of keeping your commitment not only to others but to yourself, what is dedication and consistency to you even on a daily basis? What does that look like? Discipline is very important. My mom, I was, my, I was raised by a single mom and at one point one of her boyfriends was a retired spy who was also a writer. And he said one of the best things I ever heard about writing, he said, uh, in terms of writing, he said, an amateur can rely on inspiration, a professional needs discipline. <laughs> That's absolutely true. And so, so minimally, five days a week, often six days a week, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm working, you know, and, and even and on Space Command, it's almost 24-7 now, and where I'm just kind of, I'm, it's, it's my job, and I, and I love it, but I also treat it seriously. You know, I'm a writer, and I have to write, and if I'm also producing and directing, I have to do those jobs. And I'm not looking for someone else to do the hard part. I'm doing the hard part. You know, and uh, but beyond that, I also study successful people whom I admire, and a big part of my conversation with those people is how they divide their day. And so, for instance, Ray Bradbury, who was a dear, dear friend and a very, good, a very wonderful mentor for many, many years, dearly missed. You know, um, he, uh, I found out his his writing schedule was uh, five days a week, Monday through Friday. He would write for three hours in the morning, then he would have lunch and take a nap, and then do business in the afternoon. His, his write, you know, the business around his writing career, and then evenings and weekends were, were for his family. And he did, that, he did that for 80 years, you know? So, you know, 70, 75 years, and it worked really well. And so that's the best writing schedule of anyone I know. But, um, but, but when you're a writer, producer, director, it divides up differently. So for instance, I'm not writing nearly as much as I normally would be because I'm running the Space Command campaign. But because I see that the job is getting those films uh, made, it's not about me uh, clocking pages every day. It's about getting the films made. I'm clear on what my job is. But, um, but also, you know, the moment you say, if no one picked me, how would I still get to the finish line? You're free. Because then you don't need anybody to say yes. You just figure out how to do it yourself. And uh, five, 10 years ago, that would have been much harder. In the old days, if you were shooting on 35 millimeter or 16 millimeter, making a feature would cost millions of dollars. You'd be editing on a movieola. 
print distribution would be a nightmare because like the studios and networks have all that stuff locked up. If you want to reach an audience of millions, good luck if you don't have those guys aboard. Now it's a totally different ball game. You, you can, uh, if you, uh, you know, part of Space Command was I, you know, my goal since I was 13 years old was to be a showrunner on my own science fiction show. I was just thinking to myself the other day, how, how can I get, what's the fastest route to doing that? And I thought, well, I can remove the studios and networks. I can remove the middleman and go directly to that. And that's why I've been doing this on Kickstarter, because I don't need them. And I'm not, I don't consider them the enemy, but if I don't need them, if, I'm, if I don't need to be wealthy, if I don't need to be making millions, that liberates me. I'm free. Uh, I keep my overhead very low. I've earned millions as a writer, but I'm not ruled by money. And because of that, um, I don't need to do work I don't want to do. It's free. I'm free. And um, so in terms of getting Korean film and TV, uh, writing a lot and getting better and better and better and making sure your work is solid is vital. Getting feedback from people who really know what they're talking about is vital. Getting um, people to consider your work, to look at your work, banging the drum for yourself is vital, but doing it in a way that's... It's funny, I had lunch a, a, a little while ago with Nicholas Meyer, who uh, directed Wrath of Khan, wonderful writer-director, and, um, and he said, the way you have a career in this industry is charm with persistence. And he's absolutely right. Or you could say persistence with charm, either way. But the point is, you're an absolute squeaky wheel for yourself, but in a charming way. So people don't think, gee, what, a, what an asshole. <laughs> You know, you don't want them to be saying that about you. Um, I mean, there's some really horrible alpha dogs in this industry who are very successful, but if you can do things with grace and consideration, one of the most, probably the most, the single most polite person I know is J.J. Abrams. His manners are impeccable, astonishing. He's so considerate. He's such a great guy. And so, if he can be on top of the food chain, then it means you don't have to be a jerk to make it in this town. You know, Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro, with whom I'm doing a book, He's a wonderful guy. Big heart, big heart. It's just wonderful. And, um, you know, so that's, that's how I run my life, too.